when you're ready, light your candle. And as we said, keep your calendar or journal at hand. For many, a church service this season might begin with, come ye thankful people, come. And that is the call of the season, to come as thankful people. There's an old hymn from 1844, now 156 years old. Is that too outdated? It talks about a time of harvest. How can we do that when so few live on farms? And yet, perhaps today in COVID, many people for the first time planted tomatoes and beets and squash and tried to learn to can and freeze. So maybe it's not so outdated. Maybe harvesting and gathering in has a new meaning. Come, ye thankful people, come. Raise the song of Harvest Home. The call is still there to come, thankful people, come. So let us give thanks. And what have you harvested this year? What are the gains? What are the losses? Where have weeds needed weeding in your heart? Where in your heart have new seeds grown? In these quiet moments, gather all of that in. Still your mind. Look at your calendar or your journal and harvest the moments of God's presence because God has been present through it all. Write down at least three of them. As the music plays, and as you see the beauty of the earth, then give thanks to God. words of the hymn again. All is safely gathered in ere the winter storms begin. The storms have already begun. We've all been through inner storms this year. Some of us have lived with a relentless jackhammer of sound running in our minds. Sounds of anxiety, separation from those we love, sounds of constant new ways we must do things, of information, of disinformation. How do we gather in? How do we gather thanks for all of that? From Renovari, hear this quote. If I'm honest, much of my anxiety comes from leaning on myself, putting confidence in my own understanding. There are mental pathways deeply grooved from a lifetime of habitually trying to protect myself and fabricate certainty. Can we put down the need to protect ourselves in this season, to save ourselves, and then to know God's gathered love for us? God our maker doth provide, sings the hymn. It's a conscious decision to rest in the midst of it all, to rest in God's presence. In these moments, join in this prayer, again from Renovare. Lord, help me to acknowledge you, to listen for you in all I do. Keep my mind off what isn't mine to control and on those things that are true. Help me cultivate a quiet heart. Make my soul like a held baby, like a baby content in its mother's arms. Amen. Now sit quietly with God for a few moments to be held in God's love as you listen and as you view the earth.
And now, now another hymn from this season, Now Thank We All Our God, an even older hymn from 1636. Now thank we all our God who wondrous things hath done. Every day and every, every moment of the day, God comes to us. We are never outside God's presence. He has done wondrous things. We may not have seen them, but he's done them. Did you see God today or yesterday? Maybe it was a golden glowing maple. Or maybe it was the female mallard that came for a visit under my tree at the house. Or maybe it was a child that sat on your lap to hear you read in a voice of love. Or maybe it was a verse of scripture that caught your heart or it was a prayer answer. As you listen to the music, recall this day, this week, and mark where God revealed God's presence, and then give thanks. For God has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love. again to those words, blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love. Before you think this hymn has no meaning for today, know the following. Martin Rinkhart, a Lutheran minister at the beginning of the Thirty Years' War, wrote it. His walled city became a place for fugitives, but the result was overcrowding and deadly pestilence and famine. His home was refuge for victims, and though often hard-pressed to provide for his family, he took care of others. He was the only surviving pastor in his town, with as many as 50 funerals a day, and that included his wife. And yet, and yet he wrote, Now thank we all our God. In the midst of politics, COVID, visions in churches and country and world we sing, we thank God with heart and hands and voices. For God has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. We sing it by faith. We sing against the darkness and then the light comes and it will come. It will come. Take two minutes to just watch the flame of your candle and listen. And then hear these words in your heart. I will never leave you or forsake you. I love you. I was there yesterday. I am here today and I will be here tomorrow.
Thanksgiving is an old English word for grateful thought. Now, what grateful thought would you give for this year, for this day, for these moments? I wonder if you could write a prayer of thanksgiving. And then having written that prayer, also offer the words of the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. A grateful thought offered to God. And now as you move from this time to face toward another year, another Thanksgiving in 2021, perhaps you can offer this simple prayer. Help me, O oh God, to focus on the light and not the darkness. For you are there even in the darkness. Or perhaps you want to keep this prayer near you through the year. My husband had this prayer before him as he faced an uncertain year. I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, give me light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, Go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be to you better than light and safer than a known way. And then in the light, we will come rejoicing again next year. Thanks be to God.